So nerd is cool. Nerd is in vogue right now. And it's starting to get to the point where people who are not programmers now know what for loops are. And you can always identify a for loop by three simple parts. You have the for essentially there for the programmer so that you can actually identify the for loop. You have the settings, as I call them. You have all of these weird, crazy symbols inside of parentheses. This controls the for loop. And then you have the actual brackets which is going to hold all of the code that you plan on iterating over, over and over again. There's a common misconception that most automation is occurring in AI and machine learning, when in actuality, most automation is occurring within the for loop. The for loop is almost like a form of automation itself, but there's a couple misconceptions around this automation or this idea, and that is that Many times people think that the actual data manipulation is going to be done by the for loop. The for loop is more like a conveyor belt for your data. There's no actual automation going on by the actual for loop. You must do the automation. You must build the little robot arms that are going to manipulate the data inside of it. The for loop more or less is just a nice little platform that's going to move all of your data objects along so that you can manipulate things like strings and arrays. You can grab individual characters or you can grab individual uh, properties out of an array and you can iterate over each individual one. But you are the person who must make the robot arms and actual, actually put the code in there that is going to do the automation. But if that's a little confusing to you, let's talk about a nice example with all types of cool little pictures and graphics just in case you are still confused, which you probably are. So I meant, I mentioned that there's all types of settings within a actual for loop. There are these things within brackets right here that are going to control the actual for loop and what the actual for loop does. And let's go through each individual one and talk about the three individual parts within here, because this is going to control the conveyor belt. This is going to control how fast the conveyor belt moves and you need to know how each individual part works so that you can manu manipulate the conveyor belt to your liking. So first, there's going to be this thing called the init. And the init is almost going to be like the memory card. In order for a data conveyor belt to actually exist, there's got to be a number somewhere because it has to count. In order for this actual number to exist, you have to create it. It's not just created out of thin air. You must create this number so that there can be something to actually count. It's almost like a memory card, and this is what the init is. It's simply creating the number so that there can be actual counting going on. The next part right here is going to be the condition, and the condition is almost going to be like the traffic controller for your for loop. When you reach a certain number, almost like a conveyor belt. You don't want your conveyor belt to be moving full speed the whole entire day for days on end. You want your actual for loop to end at a particular part. And the condition is going to control when it ends logically through your numbers. Then there's going to be the update. And the update is almost like the inchworm that's going to move the conveyor belt along almost like an inchworm. It's going to go one, two, three, four. And the update is going to be the actual thing that is going to propel the for loop over, or it's going to be the thing that's going to actually move the conveyor belt logically. Because remember, it's almost like a logical data conveyor belt. So if that doesn't make sense to you, a lot of times the best thing to do is to just practice for loops over and over. So we're going to do a couple of examples in VS Code and hopefully things will make a lot more sense. Okay, so first things first, we are in VS Code. Let's go ahead and let's create a string. I'm just going to call this turtle string, and this is going to have the word turtle in it. Now, we just created a string. Let's go back to the uh, base point where we talk about crud. We just created a string, and we've talked about in the past how we can actually log strings and we can actually read strings so this is going to be our create so we just created a string then we need to read the string and we read strings before strings are really easy to read 
all you have to go into here and do is something along the lines of using bracket notation to pull out the first letter, which is going to be a T. We've just isolated the T and we've read the T. But as you can imagine, what if we wanted to read the second letter? What if, what if we wanted to read the U? It'd be very simple. All we would have to do is just go down in here and put a one. But as you can kind of see that this becomes very repetitive and repetition like this in software development is not what you want. So what do we do? We read all of these within a for loop. And this is where the elegance kind of actually starts to appear. We can read things. We can do things over and over. We can crud and we can for loop and we can actually perform crud actions in a repetitious behavior so that we don't have to do all of these initializations and doing all of these reads. So the way that we do that is we just go into here and we say, let's just say nine. We want our for loop to end at nine and we're going to go into here and we are going to go plus plus. Let's go ahead and let's look at the individual parts. So we have our four and what's going to happen here is it's going to create this I right here. And then when it reaches greater than or equal to nine, it's going to stop. So let's go into here and let's console log just like this. And instead of having these individual zeros and ones right here, what we can do is we can pass in our I because our I is going to be incremented and our I is going to be added. And as you can see, what's going to happen is it's going to iterate over each individual one, just like we did here, but it's going to do so within the confines of a for loop. So instead of there being a zero and a one right here, we just short, short shortened it a lot and we put it in a for loop. Now it did iterate over the whole entire thing, but what you begin to realize is that it's undefined. So let's go back to our board here and let's talk about what happened. So essentially what's happened is that we put a string in a for loop and it's going to go through, it's going to iterate through each individual one. The for loop is going to pick up this one. So it's going to, let's just say, it's going to be a T, it's going to go U right here and then it's going to go R and it's going to iterate through each individual one and it's going to console log it inside of our for loop right here. It's going to increment it each individual time. But what begins to happen is that we actually iterate way too much. And as you can see, we have undefined. And we have undefined because there's not even nine characters within our string. So what we're going to do is we are going to have our turtle, we're just going to say turtle string right here. And JavaScript gives us a nice little property that's going to allow us to count so that we don't have to worry about putting in a nine right here. So we could go in and we can add, we could actually manually add a nine, but when we have this nice little dot length property that we can add to our data structure, it makes it a lot easier to work with and it makes it a lot easier to set the boundaries or set the actual air traffic controller so that we don't have to be the person that's going to determine that number. It will automatically determine it for us. So we've just successfully iterated over a string, but let's take it to the next level. Let's actually iterate over an array. Once again, let's think crud. Let's think in terms of crud. What we're going to do is we're just going to go into here and we are going to create an array of our favorite airplanes. Feel free to add whichever that you want. I'm going to go Apache. I'm going to go F-22. I'm going to go C-130. Shout out to all of the Call of Duty people out there. And then I'm going to have the SR-71 Blackbird. Probably the best plane out of all of them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another for loop. We're going to go into here. We're going to have our init. Then we're going to have our air traffic controller. And our air traffic controller is going to be very similar to what we had before. It's going to be our array with our length. And this is going to set when we want it to actually stop. Then also, as usual, we're going to have our I++. So go down in here and you can do whatever you want to with it, but I am just going to log out each individual part in our array. Now, remember that we can always just go into here. If we want to individually read, we could just go into our console log dot planes up here. So we could say console log planes and then we could have it to where it's within brackets 
we could uh, log the first one, which is going to be Apache, just like this. We could definitely do that, but it's way easier if we iterate and we read through them. So we're just taking our read operations and we're just putting them inside of the actual loop. Now, this is kind of getting a little cumbersome. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these and let's go down to our probably our most common and our most important one. How do we iterate through an object? Now, an object is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have an object full of my favorite type of bullfrogs. I think bullfrogs are a cool animal. And one of my favorite bullfrogs, I've never actually seen this bullfrog. It's just called a banjo toad. So it's gonna be a great, actually a great banjo toad. So I'm gonna say great banjo toad. And what we're gonna have is we're gonna have the location. The location is going to be in Australia. And the is threatened is going to be nose. This one is not going to be threatened and it's going to be false. So pretty much means that you could kill this bullfrog without anybody even caring. All right, then we're gonna go down and we're gonna have uh, the name and then we're gonna have the good old American bullfrog, which people in some parts of the world still actually eat to this day. Then we'll have the location, it's kind of a given. So it's going to be in America. So we'll have America and the American bullfrog is not threatened at all. I can assure you that. So how do we actually iterate through this and how do we actually go through? So this is going to be a classic representation of what you're probably going to see in real life. And it's an array of objects. So it's going to be very similar to the array that we had before, but we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to actually access these. So we're going to go for, we're going to go let I equal to zero. And it's going to be I is greater than. So there are, our I is going to have to be less than the actual bullfrog. So we'll have bullfrogs dot length and we'll have I plus plus just like this. And within here, we're going to have to console log just a little bit differently. So this is going to be a complex string. So what we will use is template literals. Go in here, we'll have our money sign and we'll say the bullfrogs. And we're going to need to access it with the I, but watch what happens when you just do this. What you will see is you'll get this weird object object thing. And whenever you see this object object thing, this means that you didn't dot into it. So right now it's it's iterating through our bullfrogs, but it's not iterating through to the point where we can actually see them. It's basically pasting this whole entire thing, this into our console, and we can't see it because it's not dotted into. And what do I mean by it's not dotted into? So if we want to print the great banjo toad and we want to print the great American bullfrog, these are objects, so we need to dot into our objects like this, and that's when we get our great banjo toad, and that's when we get our American bullfrog. But let's just have another example so that you can really, it really nails it and drives it home so that you can get a better understanding. Let's go into here, and let's actually do the same exact thing. So we'll go bullfrogs, and then we'll go I, and then let's just say the location. We want to make our own cool little sentence so that we can display it on our bullfrog app and when we do this we have the dot location the great banjo toad is located in australia the american bullfrog is located in america and that's pretty much how you iterate through objects and that's how the whole entire idea of objects works anyways that's a good place to start for four loops next we'll talk about nested loops if you guys enjoyed this make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching